All right. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our event, our SAP HANA surveillance event today. Um, it's going to be a great topic. The agenda today, uh, well, first off, the two uh, speakers are going to be Dan Law. Uh, Dan is the Vice President of Product Marketing for SAP, and a uh, guy I've worked with quite a bit in the past. And then Ed Stangler is the uh, Director of R&D for Bradmark and has done the bulk of the work around surveillance and HANA. So uh, we've got uh, introduction session and then two 20-minute sessions and uh, hopefully have enough time for questions and answers. And if there are questions and answers we can't get to, uh, we will uh, follow up uh, quickly with them. So a few housekeeping items. Uh, be sure and uh, keep your phones on mute. Uh, if you're not talking, and this meeting is going to be recorded, so we will be making it available. Um, we are going to be doing a, to a, a user to poll at the beginning to kind of get an idea of who our audience is, and then we'll be on to uh, Dan and Ed sessions. So the first thing I'd like to do is provide a little bit of background on Bradmark. Uh, although I joined Bradmark in November after 19 years, at SAP, I was very familiar with them and met them uh, while I was working with Sybase because we had a lot of demanding customers who wanted industrial strength monitoring tools. So we actually resold uh, a lot of Bradmark into a number of our accounts, especially in the financial services area. The company's 30 years old, we're privately held. In 2013, we were the top selling partner for SAP database and technology licenses. Um, our pr primary target customers are part of the Wheelchair 500, um, 70 of the Fortune 100, and 350 of the Fortune 500. So we've been around and very well embedded, and uh, are, are seen as having a leading database monitoring tool in the marketplace. So our lines of business are three. First, uh, we do have a very robust database monitoring software solution called Surveillance. And we provide monitoring for the entire SAP stack solutions, including ASE, IQ, Replication Server, and SAP HANA. And we also support Cluster Edition. In addition to that, Microsoft SQL Server, Oracle, and EB2. So through a very similar looking interface, you can conceivably monitor all of the databases in a large data center with a, a tool that really allows you to figure out what's going on. Our second line of business is we resell SAP database technology solutions. So we, uh, customers come to us, we work very closely with the SAP reps, and because Bradmark, uh, most of the Bradmark field sales organization have spent a lot of time reselling database and technology solutions, so they understand the state very well. And we can also resell the business objects in the IM stack, so we want to together a, a comprehensive solution we can. And our third line of business is our database, database solutions business. We actually have a number of offerings we have a database assessment program that's been extremely popular. We have uh, a gentleman named Jeffrey Garbus, who is one of the uh, top AFC luminaries in the world. He's published dozens of books on the, on the topic. And uh, people are very excited to have him come and do an assessment, 3D assessment. We're also uh, going to be having a migration assessment. We have the Exodus migration tool, and we've actually done a very complex Oracle database conversion over to ASB, converted uh, about 97% of it. So we've had some tools in our arsenal to uh, pursue migration. And then finally, uh, what, in terms of what DDA uh, and SAP knowledge that we have is most of the sales team are legacy SAP people, so they have been through the sales cycles with most of these products. And as you know, licensing is complex, understanding customers' needs, understanding and being able to talk 
at a technical level about database and technology is, is a skill set that SAP probably doesn't have a surplus of. So we can very much help you uh, position, uh, go through the sales cycle, implement uh, when there is a, a database and technology sale. And we also have expertise around licensing. So we've done free licensing of Sybase and Hana products so we understand the complexities so we can assure that we're proposing uh, the right solution uh, for the right thing. And that's about it for an overview on Bradmark. So um, I think I'm going to hand it over to Dan Law. Hey, thank you very much, Joe, and glad to be with you today. And we're going to be talking about SAP HANA today. So let me get right into that. Um, John, if you'd move the slide forward, please, that would be awesome. So what we have seen from, I'll let John get the deck up on the screen here. And uh, yeah, I've worked with Joe for a number of years and uh, database guys together, both at Sybase and SAP. And my role now is I look after product marketing for HANA, pretty close to the engineering team with what they're doing and um, uh, the, the products coming out of the, uh, the engineering group. So John, please move the the screen forward and put it in presentation mode if you would. Thank you very much. Okay, great. So the, the problem with our current IT landscape is that we've built a number of applications, whether that be manufacturing, finance, sales, uh, services, or any type of analytic apps like predictive or spatial or streaming. We've built them all discreetly to tie closely the data, the logic, and the application close together. And that works great for each specific application, but what it does is create silos and a bunch of data copies all over the enterprise and then batch processing. And John, if you move it forward, we'll see the outworking of how we have built applications in the past. So if you uh, click forward there, John. So the problem is that we have to move data around the enterprise, the ETL and staging databases to create data marts or data warehouses or multiple data marts or multiple data warehouses. In fact, back in the day uh, before HP started their consolidation, they had 150 enterprise data warehouses throughout the organization. So even though building the application specifically tying data logic and application together is good for discrete apps, it's not good for the enterprise when you need to share data, let's say, between the manufacturing build and what has been booked to order in sales. So next slide, let's take a, take a look at what would be the, the nirvana. And well, I'll tell you the outworking of this is that still 72% today of um, IT budgets worldwide are spent on keeping the lights on and not driving business innovation. And really what we need to get to is to invert that, to make 72% uh, driving business innovation, do, doing new applications, and reducing the amount of time and money and, and effort we spend on, spend on keeping the lights on. And I find the McKinsey quote very, very interesting, that 40% of executives are, are really scared that their organizations will not keep pace with technology change and maybe not just lose their competitive edge, but be uh, disintermediated, like what is happening to all the taxi services with, uh, with Uber and Lyft and with uh, B&Bs and with Airbnb. So they have to keep pace. So John, let's take a look at the next slide and see what we believe the answer to be. And that is that you take all of these applications, next click, please, and if you could take all that data and make it available to the enterprise and to all the logic and all the applications across the enterprise, and if you can do it all together immediately, then you'd be able to share data between analytic sales, finance, services, uh, all your different pieces of the organization. But the problem is uh, disk-based databases just have not been able to do that in the past because they can't serve the data fast enough. And you can't have one big database 
across all of your organization that will serve all those apps in a reasonable time span if you're running on disk. So the next slide shows the only way to really do that is to put all that data in memory and have an in-memory data platform that allows you to service all those applications. Uh, Joe and I can tell you that being from uh, a database company, Sidebase, for many, many years, the bulk of what we did from um, a design standpoint for the database is how to optimize the movement of uh, the data off of the disk page into the, to the memory system so that the database could work on it. And in fact, that's what most DBAs do is optimizing uh, the movement of data, the placement of data uh, to get it up into the memory area so that it can be then be processed. So if you have an in-memory system that makes all the data available for all the applications at the same time, that's what we're driving toward. What that will allow is it will allow innovation, it will accelerate all of your applications together uh, discreetly and then as a whole, it will allow you to innovate across different silo stacks, and finally it will provide a lot of simplicity by removing a lot of the layers that are currently uh, inherent in, in many enterprises today. Okay, next slide. So that, that's really our viewpoint on why we designed uh, the HANA platform, and in, in fact, SAP designed the HANA platform so that, first and foremost, SAP could redesign all of its applications and make them real-time. Uh, R1, R2, R3 all stood for real-time, but none of them really were. They were not doing analytics and transactions at the same time. Those were uh, discrete elements that were, uh, were separated through different data structures and different databases. But now, the HANA platform actually delivers that uh, for all devices, all applications. Uh, next slide, please, John. And it's not only SAP applications that are being rewritten to this platform, but also we have third-party applications, and we have over 1,800 startups that are building to the platform, to the HANS platform. We've delivered with them, or they've delivered with us, over 150 applications now that are being uh, written and delivered on the HANA platform, as well as fully a third of our customers that have implemented HANA have actually done that through a custom application um, that they built, whether that be a custom transactional application or whether that be an application that pulls data out of SAP and then does analytics on it or whether it pulls data from a number of different applications, maybe that some SAP, some uh, other data from Teradata or Oracle or other databases, and those custom applications uh, are running fast and simple and, and innovatively on the HANA platform. So next slide, John. And I also want to show that there's a cloud back there because we can run uh, on-premise or on the cloud. Let me give you just one example, and again, today is, is you can highlight a number of different examples of customers using it. We'll just use one as, as uh, how uh, innovative and, and how uh, customers are using HANA to truly innovate and simplify. So Molson Coors uh, is, is a beer company, as you could probably guess, and uh, one of the largest beer companies in the world. And they had the classic problem of IT where they were moving data uh, out of the transactional systems into an enterprise data warehouse. In this case, it was SAP Business Warehouse, or BW. And their nightly loads and reorganizing of data and building of indices and building of cubes for reporting was taking until 10.30, 11 o'clock in the morning. And there was, ex there was an expectation by the, 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 the different C officers within the company, the CEO, the COO, uh, the CIO, uh, other C uh, uh, executives, that they would have the information they needed the dashboard, the reports they needed to run their business when they came in in the morning. And IT was delivering on an Oracle system running business warehouse. They were delivering that at 11 o'clock in the morning. That was not acceptable to the company. So uh, Molson Coors decided to take their business warehouse, uh, do a database port, not any application port, but the database port, uh, pushing the data into HANA. And, and uh, they did that. They cut over in a weekend and they're actually getting 50% uh, faster loading and post-processing 
and now at about 3 or 4 in the morning, they're actually able to run the dashboards, get them up and running, run the reports that the, ex that the execs needed. So they've dramatically reduced their batch window down to a time frame that allows them to do their key reporting uh, during the day. And they actually have an extra window if there is a, an additional reporting need that's needed or additional reports that they need to build for the, for the executives every day. The second big thing that this gave them is it helped them on the prototyping. So uh, it used to be that a line of business, business person would come and say, I'd like to add something to the dashboard, or I'd like the dashboard that I, that I work with every day to look different, or I'd like to add a drill down capability. And what would have to happen is the, is the IT people would have to go back, they'd have to figure out how this warehouse could orchestrate this, how they would build the different industries, different cubes to make that happen. And that took five days. So a Monday rolled around, the line of business person asked for a change, and uh, the next Monday, the IT person would give them the prototype. Well, needless to say, if you have four iterations of that, that month has gone by already. Now, with uh, BW running on HANA, the line of business comes, the IT per, uh, makes a new request, the IT person builds view on top of HANA, that's physically how they do it, and they can actually show the prototype of the report or the new drill down in one day. So those five iterations or four iterations, instead of taking a month, now takes within a week to make that happen. Think about how your line of business is going to be uh, serviced and um, really revolutionized and, and the view they're going to have of IT. Uh, in this type of environment. So this was a, a huge win for Molson Coors, getting the reporting done on time and actually getting the, the prototyping done so that the reports can be built and, and done in a much, much faster time frame. And that's just one example of how HANA is helping to innovate with customers. Okay, let's go to the next slide, please. And let me get a little bit further into the HANA platform. Since uh, I know this is a more technical audience than the line of business people that SAP many times talks to, I actually want to go and um, pull apart the HANA platform just to let you know what is inside the, the HANA platform itself. It's much more than just a database. It's, it's really a database and application development platform, again, for all different, uh, all, all different applications. And we break that into three services, application services, database services, and integration services. Now let's go to the next slide and we'll talk about core database services first. So from a, a foundational standpoint, we've taken a lot of what uh, SAP has learned from uh, Sybase IQ uh, project and, and database that, that we had in the market for many years. I uh, didn't take the code line, but took a lot of the expertise and a lot of the learnings that we had with IQ to create a columnar database. That gives you a couple of things. It gives you analytics out of the box. It also gives you uh, great compression. So when you're in memory, you are working with less information. You can get a four, or five, six times uh, compression rate on the data you're actually storing. We also allow parallelization across multi-cores and across uh, multiple machines. So you can implement this in SMP or in a cluster environment. Uh, we also have provided with our latest release the ability to have a system tenant with multi-tenant databases. So if you're deploying in the cloud a number of different applications, you can implement that through multi-tenant database containers. Finally, we've added uh, capabilities, again, from our IQ project to allow dynamic tiering so that if you do want to have information uh, that's stored in columnar format, integrated with HANA, but not necessarily in memory, let's say it's data that you only access maybe once a week or, or twice a week or twice a month, you can actually tier the data out to a, a column-based disk system. You can have your hot data in memory and then your warm data in your, uh, your tiering tier that is in, uh, that on disk. So this allows you to go from uh, uh, terabytes of data to petabytes of data within the HANA platform, and it's all managed as one. Now let's go to the next slide, and we'll talk a little bit about once we have the basics for the column-based system and how we manage that, then we can add different processing engines on top of that data structure. So we've added the capability to store data and process data in spatial format. 
uh, longitude, latitude, and, and nearness, and so on and so forth. Same thing with graph for affinity. And we see that um, actually coming to the fore in some of our HR applications. Uh, we provide predictive algorithm libraries for, uh, for doing a number of different correlative and clustering uh, predictive applications. We've added search and text analytics directly into the system as well, so you can store and, and access and analyze unstructured data. We allow the, the capture of streaming data as well within HANA. So as sensor devices come online, you can build applications that can integrate uh, those sensor and streaming data devices directly into the platform. In addition, we've added data quality. So if you want to do profiling and data enrichment directly inside the platform, you don't have to have an extra tool to do that. Also, we've added series data. And again, that comes into the fore with time series information you're doing, but also sensor series as well. So we've laid a foundation for that. And then the, the function libraries, again, for doing advanced functions. All right, let's go on to application services. Next slide, John. So from an application services standpoint, inside of HANA, we've actually added a web server. So the web server is inside the system. Our Fiori UX, which allows you to build applications that can be deployed in mobile-first manner or onto a desktop or any device, smartphone, tablet, whatever. Uh, we've actually provided that Fiori UX, which is uh, up to our new beautiful uh, uh, user interface product. And then finally, we provide application lifecycle management within the, the product as well as as well as an app server. Now let's go, go into integration services. So we've also provided a number of ways for HANA to integrate with other data sources and other data systems. So from a, a smart data access standpoint, that allows you to federate data from HANA to DB2, Netiza, Oracle, Teradata. Uh, ASC, IQ, or Hive in a Hadoop environment. And what that allows you to do is instead of moving all data into HANA, if you want to federate some of the data uh, in a HANA query, it can go out and find it. And, and uh, if it's in DB2, you just register that as a virtual table. And HANA actually has some smart as to where it needs to bring the data. If it's a big join between a, a big DB2 table and a, and a HANA table, it'll actually move that data into memory and then uh, move that table into memory from DB2 and join it there. So it has some smarts on how it does the, the smart data access. From an integration standpoint, we can load data either from a, a log-based replication or stored procedures uh, using uh, system landscape technology, SAP, SAP or we can use EPL uh, from our data services product, or ELT for doing uh, loading and transforming later. All those different mechanisms are available, again, from a number of different data sources, whether that be relational uh, or from uh, OData or from uh, Hadoop. Uh, from a Hadoop standpoint, we provide very, very robust Hadoop integration. So we integrate not only with Hadoop from a data integration standpoint, pulling data into uh, uh, HANA from Hadoop, but we also allow connectivity to Hive. So you can write SQL against uh, Hadoop and, and, and push that through Hive. You can also um, use the Spark uh, integration. In fact, we um, uh, distribute the, the Spark uh, product from Databricks so that HANA can be either a data source to a Spark application or it can be uh, consumed Spark data. So you can run whole data out of Spark. Uh, make it tabular inside of HANA and run SQL against that. So there's some exciting things we're doing with, uh, with uh, HANA and Hadoop integration. And then finally, we integrate with our over 1,300, 1,400 different discrete um, uh, uh, algorithms that we support through R. And so you can call directly from, uh, from HANA uh, jobs that run in R. So very exciting uh, on that as well. All right, let's move on. So that's, that's really the, the, the platform, the app services, database services, integration services. And then at the top, it allows interfaces to SQL, JSON, ADO.net, ODBC, DDBC, OData, HTML, all the things that you'd expect the data management platform to, to, um, uh, to interoperate with. All right, next slide, please, John. And we allow the, or we enable either cloud deployments, so you can do this in the cloud, you can do it on-premise, you can deploy HANA on-premise, or you can choose to deploy it in a hybrid fashion 
the way we implement the hybrid fashion is you can have a system tenant either in the cloud or on-premise, and you can have your database container tenants between, uh, between the, the two, the cloud and the on-premise system. So if you have an on-premise system, but you want to start moving to the cloud, we, have, we, we allow the hybrid uh, architecture as well. All right, next slide, John. A, a lot of people ask, how, do you, how can you actually purchase and acquire HANA? We provide two ways to do that. One is the appliance form factor, where you buy HANA, the compute server, the networking capability, the storage for acid persistence, all in an appliance from one of 12 different vendors that are listed there at the bottom. Or you can do it through Tater Data Center integration, the capability to buy HANA from us but use your existing servers, whether that be Z on E5 base or E7 base, using networking capability from Cisco or Brocade. Uh, storage from IBM, HP, EMC, uh, uh, other vendors as well. Uh, so you can you can use the Taylor Data Center integration method. What we provide is a, is a is a checker to make sure that it's up to the performance standards that's needed to, to make Hana really go. All right, next slide, John. And finally, we'll talk about that. Uh, customers ask about what is our high availability and disaster recovery. Just hitting on this very quickly. We provide very robust high availability and disaster recovery, either via a standby method, uh, if you're in a multi-node environment, having a node ready for standby that can crank up if one of the other node fails. You can go from primary to secondary within your data center uh, through um, uh, replication that comes standard with, uh, with HANA, or you can use storage replication from one of our other vendors. Uh, like IBM, EMC, HP, those folks. So a very robust um, HADR system, and we supply and, and uh, uh, in, in the HADR we allow uh, synchronous replication in either data center environments or metro environments, and then async for, for further distances. All right, next slide, John. So that's the platform. Uh, let me say now, how do I get started? That's really the question. So next slide, let's go and, and talk about how folks can get started with this. So there's our, our uh, pedigree slide, almost 6,000 customers. Um, so you can read that. We'll, we'll make that available to you guys. Um, next slide, John. So I want to talk quickly as we go. Uh, how do you get started? Uh, it, that's a question we get from a lot of customers. You get started by identifying business needs and goals, whether that be through an IPDF, I'm going to explain in just a second, interactive PDF, uh, or bring in SAP to do a design workshop, how to bring that into your into your company. Then evaluate the value of HANA to solve the problem. So don't bring it in just to kick the tires to see if the database works. Actually apply it to a big problem that you have like Molson Coors did with their batch window and prototyping problems. And then work with uh, SAP or, or SI to apply HANA to the problem, implement the solution, and then evaluate it against the goal. So uh, really bring in a business case where the business users and the IT group are tied together. And, and that's where we see customers having success. Now to help you identify, next slide, John, to help you identify where we see customers using HANA, we have an interactive PDF that you can find on hana.sap.com slash applications, and that will actually give you a wealth of information by a number of different business use cases, whether that be operational reporting or data warehousing or uh, business processes uh, or real-time operational intelligence or simulation automation predictive. Or if you're an SAP customer coming in through the product, if you know uh, the products that you have, how it can help you innovate and accelerate by an SAP product. Again, you can get that at honor.sap.com slash applications. It'll give you over 100 um, customer success stories. It will give you uh, the journey that you need to go through for bringing HANA into your enterprise. It'll go through implementation paths of how you can um, uh, how you can bring HANA in and the best practices for that. It's probably got a thousand links inside of this interactive PDF they go out to different places that it's just a great resource for uh, customer stories, implementation, buyer's journey, those kind of things. And so last slide. So how do you get involved? Well, go to hana.sap.com, 
is uh, how you get involved. Read our blogs. We have a, a whole bunch of blogs on uh, blogs.sapihana.com. You can download a developer trial if you want to do that. You can do that on SCN. Uh, we have ebooks as well. So a lot of different ways to get involved to get started with HANA. So that's it in a nutshell. I took two more minutes than I had been allotted. But Ed, I hope you, uh, I apologize. Uh, I, I hope uh, that that's OK for you. And I'm going to turn it over to you to talk about now uh, the Bradmark and SAP relationship, and then how uh, Bradmark is helping to monitor and manage on them. So yeah, Dan, I'll cover that a little bit before Ed gets started. So uh, again, we've had a long-term relationship with uh, SAP and the partner. We're a partner at partner in the UK. Uh, we spend uh, as much time selling SAP D and T products as we do selling our own surveillance. So um, the two we've got. A, a differentiation with this combination of skills. And uh, we have been building out surveillance for HANA for over a year. So we have uh, uh, surveillance that works with SP7, SP9, SP8, and SP9. And we were going to get started a few weeks ago working on a multi-node uh, surveillance tool for HANA multi-node, but we're running a little behind on that. But the, uh, Fujitsu have agreed to uh, work with us, give us a multi-node HANA box so we can uh, validate that surveillance works on top of it. In terms of certification, so uh, SAP does not certify DB monitoring tools. Uh, that's a decision that was made a long time ago. They do certify EPL uh, and OLAP tools, as you know. So what we're doing now, I'm working with HANA team uh, product management and uh, the ICT group to go through a te technical suitability of the PSR. That's an alternative. So we are working on that right now. We should have it done uh, in about 30 days. So um, that, that will validate and provide the technical inner workings between HANA and uh, surveillance. So, Ed, are you ready to bring up your materials? Uh, yes, thanks, Joe. Uh, uh, if you can pass the presentation over to me, I'll be able to, to share the, uh, the desktop here. And uh, so now uh, there should be a screen on there with uh, our surveillance product. Thank you, Joe and Dan, so much. Uh, Dan gave an incredible uh, talk about uh, SAP's vision for HANA and, and who's using it and what they what they what they're where they're going with it, and it's really um, it's a relationship that um, uh, our relationship with SAP is uh, is to really support them as much as possible with our products with our monitoring products and some of the relationships that they have with customers are relationships that we've had also uh, in other database areas as well. So uh, we certainly are. are are taking the needs of the customers and bringing that, you know, the things that we've seen in other databases, and we're bringing that to the HANA database as well. Uh, we have uh, surveillance, surveillance support for a wide range of databases, um, uh, for all sorts of different databases, as well as a lot of SAP databases like ASC and IQ. Uh, and then we brought that to HANA as well. And you can see here our our health screen in surveillance. Our health screen is a is a starting point that we have not just in HANA, but also in ASC and IQ and other databases. Something that shows an overall thing about what's going on uh, in terms of database health. And, um, and from here, it's a jumping point to other places you can go through to see more information on, it, on databases, more information on health, more information on activity. So I'm going to back up a little bit and start talking about uh, some of the more important things of uh, what surveillance does for HANA. In particular, for HANA, there are some major key reasons, technically, to use the HANA database, whether you're using it for business suite or using it for some other application that you're using. Uh, Joe mentioned a little bit about our migration uh, services for bringing your existing application from uh, from different databases to different databases. Uh, so HANA has a wide range of uses, uh, but there's a couple of key major technical points that HANA has, major strengths that it has that we try to cover. One, one particular one is the, uh, of course, it's an in-memory database. Uh, but also it has column store tables. So for column store tables, we make sure that we show 
information on uh, on the breakdown of how that's in memory. Uh, let me go ahead and bring up a different screen here. I think that would be a little bit better. You can see here um, the information we have are broken down for different tables. You can see the different components that are in memory. If I hover over here for a moment, you can see we break it down by the main amount that's in memory, as well as the delta amount, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. We also show the history delta and the history main. So one of the key things in, in monitoring HANA is to make sure that your tables that you want in memory are actually in memory, or that if they're not loaded, that they're being loaded when you want them to. And you can see here we have a status about whether it's partially loaded, whether it's fully loaded, whether it's not loaded. Uh, in this particular case, on this table at the top, you can see that currently it's using 221 megabytes of memory uh, currently. But if you were to fully load it, we have, uh, it's estimated it's about 240 megabytes in memory. So the management of your in-memory database of what, what is loaded and what is not loaded is a major aspect of monitoring the HANA database itself. And of course that impacts your application because there are certain things you want in memory and certain things that you don't necessarily need in memory. HANA also, HANA is a column store as well as a row store database. You can do both. But the column store is really where the, your information is going to reside from either business suite or some other application. And we show additional details on that as well. Uh, uh, the unload priority, the preloaded, whether it's merging currently, uh, and I'll mention that again in a moment. And of course, the actual numbers for uh, the main, the history, the delta percent, things like that. Another key aspect to, uh, to HANA, well, the, part of this actually is the fact that HANA is able to load data very quickly, but it's being able to do that because of some tricks that it does, that SAP does. And one of the tricks is, because traditionally, like for example, in IQ, if you, if you ever use that, is it's been difficult to load data because it's a performance issues with loading. But uh, they've gotten much better in IQ, of course. And in HANA, the way they do that is that these writes actually go to the Delta store. So with the Delta store, occasionally it has to merge the Delta into the table. And that's going to be um, done on a periodic basis. It's kind of like a, a reorganization, so to speak, of the table. So the Delta store becomes a very important thing to monitor. And so uh, the merged information, we'll go back over here again. Uh, you can see here the uh, last merge time, the whether it's merging at this particular time, we show that as well. And we can show uh, table, uh, tables by the top deltas, for example. And this is very important if you're monitoring uh, to see, make sure that the deltas are happening on a frequent basis. You certainly want to get alerted if the deltas are piling up and you're not able to, it's not merging in a, in a, in a uh, particular uh, uh, timely fashion, for example, those kinds of things. So delta, delta management becomes a big important part of monitoring the SAP HANA database. And we can show top delta in terms of a percentage of the table as well. So in this case, now this particular table is very small, but in this, if this was a very large table that you really needed, it was very important to your application, 57% uh, delta would be a little bit high. Um, and definitely something something might be going on with the merging process. It might be having a problem. It may be going too slow uh, for various performance reasons. A lot of different things can impact this. And we're going to definitely, we can show you, we can alert off of this to show you that there's a problem with delta merging going on. You can also take a look at column store information in terms of estimated usage. So if you um, are looking at maybe deciding, well, maybe we need these particular tables to be in memory more often, you can see how, how much memory that would take on here as well. Another key point uh, of, of SAP HANA, of course, is the fact that it's in the memory database. And we want to see what's in memory. So let's go back over here to the health window. We show a nice breakdown of your memory components. So you can see you know, if there's, if there's more tables that you need to get loaded into the database. You can uh, see if, if, there's, if you're running low on memory, you can see what's impacting it. In this case, we don't have a whole lot of memory, just a few hundred megabytes. So we break that down by column store tables that are loaded. Uh, you, you can see ones that are not loaded as well, uh, as well as the metadata and the row store tables. The row store is mainly used for dictionary uh, on, on how to database. So through all this, uh, and then also I should also mention the volume I.O. Uh, the volume I.O. refers to uh, when it's actually loading from disk. So as it's loading information from disk into the memory database, uh, it's going to produce some disk IOs, and this. So typically, you want this to be very low on the volume IO because if you're seeing a very high volume IO per second, that means that it's sitting there and loading 
data quite often uh, from disk, and that may or may not be something you want. So probably you don't want that, um, but it depends, of course, on your database and your application and things like that. So those are the key aspects of HANA database. Uh, of course, another big aspect of HANA database is the, uh, the, the easy, ease with which you can develop applications for it, the environment, the integrated system for creating applications. Um, but in terms of the other technical aspects, we have the column store, the in-memory database aspects. Those are the important things to be monitoring. Another advantage um, that surveillance has, though, um, of course, is the ability to see overall health. Uh, as I mentioned, this is something, a starting point that we have for all of our databases. Uh, we have things like instance information. We have the, the host name, the version, the CPUs. So this is a pretty small antenna instance. We have CPU broken down by user CPU system, weight IO. You can see here, if we break it out here, it's broken down into different pieces. This is a relatively inactive system. Uh, we have a blocking situation currently out there, and we'll see more of that in just a moment. But uh, you can see that we have also the top column store information. So this is our column storage information that we saw on the other screen, but we're seeing the top information. So you can see at a glance what's going on. Uh, it has all the other columns if we scroll over to the right. We can see the top SQL that's out there right now. As I mentioned before, we have a bit of a blocking situation going on. And you can see on here, and if, if you click on the SQL, you can see the full SQL text. Uh, and you can see all of the lapse times that are running out there, and as well as the start times, the memory use, the logins. So at a glance, you can see what's going on in this particular database. You also see the operations. So for example, if there's a delta merge going on, the delta merge is going to show up in here uh, as an operation, or if there's any other long-running operations in the database, that will show up here as well. You can also see volume information. The volumes uh, this is in this particular case is broken down by in a couple ways. And you can see the data used, the data free, the log used, all those kinds of things. So overall, this is a quick look at something. So if you've received an alert from the surveillance product, you can go to this page. You can see this. This is, a, of course, this is a web client. So as well as anybody else who might need to monitor the database at a high level can see that here as well. Now, of course, as I mentioned before, we have a relationship with many customers uh, that SAP has, and we've been doing stuff with them for many years in other database areas. So we know that one of the important things for DBAs to do, be able to do is to bring some of their knowledge from other databases, um, SAP or non-SAP databases, and bring that knowledge over to HANA and be able to look at things in the way they're familiar with. So we go through, uh, we, we make sure that we present a lot of information the way that DBAs are used to seeing them in the other databases. We have a lot of Windows base uh, developed just for that. So for example, we have uh, currently running statements. Let me see here. If, uh, just a moment here while we um, find the right window here. I'm just going to bring up a new window then. So this is, we have currently running statements. Uh, again, this is very similar to the one on the health window. You can click on this. You can see the full SQL text, and also you can see the SQL plan for it. You can see here we have a blocking situation that's been running for about 57 minutes or 27 minutes, depending on uh, the, the, the person that's being blocked. You can see information on the person who's running it, uh, the login, the memory used, those kinds of things. So this is, this is some of the, the typical thing that you want to do in other databases is to see what's currently running, who's running it, uh, the see the SQL text, see the SQL plan. And then we can also see the connections that are out there as well. So this is by connection up by Fred. But by connection, we can see the users that are out there. If I scroll down here, you can see here's my blocking situation. I have one person who's running out there. He has, uh, he, he's running here with, uh, with a particular plan, uh, a particular status. You see how long he's been idle, how bytes received. So the kinds of things that you're used to seeing with the types of I.O. throughput, uh, the memory size, uh, we can see the, effect, the, the rows, the login time. You can see in terms of application, we can see the client IP address, the client host, the client head, all those important things that you need to see to relate, to relate the connection to the application are available here as well. And then we also see, uh, we can also see memory usage. Now the memory usage we saw already on the main window, uh, but we can also see this by service. So if we go to service memory usage, uh, 
Uh, I think it's taking a little bit of time. I got. I have a very busy process running on here. Okay, here we go. So now we have a service. Uh, the different services in HANA are broken down here. The PID number, the memory allocation, the logical memory, those are on here as well. This is analogous to the kinds of memory things you've been looking at in other databases. And of course, space usage is an extremely important thing, even in HANA, uh, go over to disk usage. Here we can see the disk usage, so we've already we've summed information over all of the disks, because there also, there's also the concept of volumes in HANA. So here we've, uh, we, we can also we summarize, sum, summarize over volumes and also over disks, disks as well. And here you can see graphical representation of how much is used, what's the total used, uh, what type of data it is on here as well. You also see the path information and things like that. Volume information we already saw on, on the health window, but that's a different way of looking at it, a uh, different way that it's that it's done on there. You can also see lock information. So here's my blocking situation going on. You can see I have on this particular host, I have the lock table, lock tab table being uh, locked down, the acquired time and the elapsed time. Uh, what's not shown on here at the moment is that we also have a an, uh, we also have a screen where that we're going to have in our next release that shows the actual blocking scenario graphically, so you can see which items are being blocked. So we also saw earlier the operations uh, tab on the health window, and we also have open transactions information, so you can see. Things like Delta merges going on, uh, which is akin to long-running operations and other types of databases. Open transactions, so if they, so you can see, it's, it's, you know, there's of course the fine line between the SQL that's running and the open connections and the open transactions. But all of those kinds of things are things that you see in other databases through other tools, and also with our tool as well. So we also support all of your other databases as well. And of course, if you if that's if that's another thing that's important to your group be able to have a single interface across different types of databases that you have because of course every organization has different different types of databases. Um, even within even in the SAP family, of course, you're probably you're gonna have some ASE, some IQ, some HANA, all those kinds of things are you can monitor with one tool, which is uh, Brandmark surveillance as well. Now of course all of this was real time information I've been showing you. We can also um, do alerting off of all of this. We have a dashboard view where we can see overall what's going on in the different databases. We can also see we can see it by databases, what we call entities. We can also see it by servers as well. Here we can see we have two databases set up. Uh, I have an ASC database right here, which uh, is uh, yeah, this is some uh, segment is full on here. And of course, on our HANA database, you can see we've had some statements that have been running for a very long time. So I actually have an alert that says that after a certain after 10 minutes, it's going to send me an alert automatically. Now, in addition to seeing it on this particular screen, you can also get emails, you can get uh, SNMP traps, you can run programs, you can do all the kinds of things that you're used to doing in other tools, especially for other databases. You can do that here and get HANA monitoring, the full HANA monitoring for your database unattended or attended. To actually set that up, we have a rule system. We can go over here real quickly to see our rule system. On the rules, you can see we have a wide variety of rules for HANA and Delta percent. Uh, so if, if, as I was mentioning before, if it was 50%, that would be quite a high amount of Delta for a large table that you need for your application. So you can get an alert based off of that. And you can see here in the bottom part of the screen the message that you get. We have replaceable parameters. We have a where conditional clause that you can set. All those kinds of things. Uh, you can set values for it, those kinds of things. Turn them on and off. Uh, we have things on licensing, on long-running statements, transactions, volumes. Uh, so a wide variety of different rules for being able to monitor your database unattended. And when you get that alert, then you can come into the UI, the web UI right here, to see what's going on with it. Now, in addition to this, of course, if you come in here and the issue happened uh, a while ago, you can also, uh, you know, you won't be able to see that here in the real-time interface. So with that, you can also go in here into our flashback interface. You can actually take the entire interface back. So I could go back to, let's say, Friday last week, or I could go back two weeks ago. Um, you know, a few weeks' worth of data is stored right there on the system with, uh, with, with where our product is running and some flat files. And you can go back a few weeks. You can configure that, of course. Um, or you can go back a month or two. 
So for relatively short-term data, for post-mortem analysis on those alerts that you're getting, you can easily do that in our product. And the interface that you, that, that, the, that you look at is our real-time interface, but actually taken back in time. So you would see the historical aspects. So it's very much like how this graph can go, goes back, let's say, an hour ago. Uh, you can take this actually back yesterday, last Friday and see how it was at that particular time when the alert was generated. So fantastic post-mortem analysis capabilities and surveillance as well. If you need to see other information, of course, here you can see our tree full of uh, uh, different databases that we can monitor on this particular system. You can have more than one system. You can have different uh, permissions for different systems. All the kinds of things that you're used to doing. You know, of course, you can also look at the OS and monitor various OS aspects of it. Overall CPU at the OS, the BIOS at the US, OS. A lot of different things you can do right there and then. But going back to HANA again, uh, Go ahead and back here to the overall surveillance. Uh, in addition to the alerting, the flashback capability for short-term analysis, you can also export to a database. So we also have reports that you can run for more long-term data. So if you need long-term trending of data, if you need to do, uh, if you want to run your own SQL against the data, of course we can always export that to a real database of some sort. You can export that to right now. Uh, uh, HANA is not supported, but we will be supporting that on our next release, so you'll be able to export that to HANA database or to an ASD or to some other database that you're choosing as well. And you can run reporting and you can run long -term, more, more long-term analysis. So that's about, that's a, a brief overview of our surveillance product for HANA and then you can, the kinds of things that you want to monitor for the types of strengths that, mon that HANA has. Uh, we, uh, and as Joe mentioned, we'll be supporting multi-node HANA very shortly. And uh, when we do that, that'll be we'll be able to show the different nodes on a particular multi-node HANA and see, uh, see the same similar kinds of things, but on multi-node as well. So back to you, Joe. All right, Ed, thank you very much. That was great. Uh, good stuff, and I hope everyone came away with a strong understanding of uh, the support and complexity with HANA, with different animal. So I think you've done a good job of showing how we can effectively uh, manage the environment. So, uh, great job, Ed. I, I think we should open up now for questions. Um, and I believe we're, we're recording this, so we will make, if you were on it uh we'll make a recording available in a few days. So, uh, let's open it up for questions. Are there any questions, have any questions come in from the audience, John? John Avery. Can you hear me? Ed, can you hear me? Yeah, I, yeah, I can hear you there. Hey, uh, this is Dan. I have a question of uh, of you, Ed. Does um, uh, does surveillance work with the multi-tenant database today? So you might have a system uh, database and then three or four tenants. Uh, does it discreetly manage uh, all of those? How does that work in a multi-tenant database environment? Well, well, Dan, we don't have anything in particular for tenant at the moment, but that's something we're definitely want to support in the future because it's, I mean, we know that's important for especially for cloud-based providers uh, and for other hosters that are doing this kind of thing. We know that's very important, even and also inside enterprises as well. Uh, but we don't have that currently at the moment, anything specific for that. So you could use the product to monitor those kinds of things and to be able to see that. We have customers who use the surveillance product for chargeback and things like that. So um, it's, it's something definitely that you could probably do a little bit of, but we don't have anything specifically for it yet. Got it. So right now you just you you'd uh, point it at each specific tenant database discreetly. Is that right? Um, yeah, you could set it up that way. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Good. So John, do we have uh, anybody who's asking a question there? Or are we having some technical problems getting that? I'm not sure, John, Avery, do you know how the uh, audience... Yes, I do. I, do. I do have one question here. Um, what will additional cost, uh, what's the additional cost for surveillance product? <laughs> Joe, I think that's it will, your... Uh, yeah, that it'll be the standard way that surveillance is uh, licensed by CORE. 
Um, so there's, there's no additional cost for the HANA product that would, there would be for like an IQ or a replication down the way. Okay. And another question came in, uh, how different is the admin HANA and is there an interface in Bradmark to do it, i.e. reorg, update statistics, CC, uh, D, D, database CC, et cetera? I'm sorry, was that a management question? A management of HANA question? Yeah, admin, admin HANA. How different is uh, it? Admin HANA. Yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah, there's, there's, uh, we don't have a lot of the uh, full-blown administration that you have at HANA Studio, for example, but you can do a few things like you can kill a session and you can uh, do some other, some basic thing, actions at the moment. Uh, we're hoping to add a few more, but right now it's definitely, it's not an administration tool, it's, it's a monitoring tool for HANA. Okay, and just to remind everybody, this is recording. We'll have availability on this recording um, uh, posted online when we uh, are done. Uh, Joe, there were a few other uh, mentions we want to try to do. Obviously, the uh, uh, learning learning more. About to And Fujitsu, exactly. Yeah, so we're working uh, very closely to, with Fujitsu on a number of things. One is they have a uh, in-memory accelerator for ASD, so we'll uh, find a lot of customers uh, having challenges around ASD environments that are running slow, and they're on older platforms such as HPUX, uh, and they're looking for uh, less costly appliance in a Linux format. And so uh, we can take existing ASD application, put some new hardware behind it, and uh, dramatically increase performance uh, via the use of ILM memory. Uh, we're at, we have a couple of opportunities right now that are have evolved. And then second is the HANA appliance. Uh, we just used sold, I think, three or 400 of HANA appliances last year in uh, EMEA. They aren't as popular here in the U.S., but uh, we do have the, uh, I believe they have the largest HANA uh, node, which is six terabytes. So that gives us a lot of runtime. So again, uh, great partnership between SAP, Fujitsu, and Redmond. Great. Okay, guys. And uh, again, uh, we will be uh, next week in Atlanta for the uh, ISUC Tech event. Uh, Jenny's will receive, hang on, will receive uh, information on that. And I believe uh, you can wrap up, Joe. I don't see any other questions. Uh, John, I think we've lost Joe, so I'll just wrap up, wrap up. This is Dan. Thank you so okay. much yes. for joining us today. Hope it hopefully was helpful to you. Learn more about HANA. Uh, actually see the product in action, doing the monitoring of HANA, seeing Delta Store and uh, the column usage and the SQL usage. So uh, I, I think Brad Mark uh, brings a nice added value to HANA, and I hope that this uh, webinar was helpful for you. So thank you so much for attending.